back with you, uh, Pastor Bob 2.0, here on the Sanctuary National Matrix. And uh, uh, Pastor Bob Beeman and I have been talking for a little bit and wanted to get this going again. Thank you for all of the comments and kind words and everything that's been coming in over the last year, because it's been about a year since I've done one of these. Um, and it's my hope not to get real ambitious and do it every day or anything like that, because I'm also a, a pastor of a church, but to at least get one out every Wednesday, and I'd love to hear from you. My email address is pastorbobadams at gmail.com, and uh, for those of you that have watched my videos in the past, thank you. Um, for those of you that are new to this, welcome. <laughs> and you might be wondering, why am I sitting in this little old truck doing this uh, video cast today? Well, it's kind of simple. See, I've always been a car guy. Um, ever since I was 18, when I started driving, and in a couple months, I'm going to be 40. Um, I've always enjoyed cars. Sadly, I swapped out cars so many times uh, to the point where, you know, if it's a couple hundred dollar used car, fine. But it got a little out of hand in the, my early 20s when I would start swapping out financed cars. Now, I love the new smell of cars. I love the way they handle, the way they look, everything. But it started getting dangerous because you'd finance one car, a couple years later trade it in, and the loan wasn't fully paid off. So they'd piggyback that on the new loan. And now you're owing way more money than you should for a car, a new car, or a used car. And so here I am sitting in this 1996 Chevy S10, um, 180,000 miles on it, 180,000 miles on it, a little five speed, uh, four, four cylinder. Nicest thing about it is this little uh, Pioneer deck that I put in so I can play my iPhone and my iPod and everything, um, Pandora. But, um, yeah, so I got this because sitting at home in my garage is my Dodge pickup truck. Now that I just paid off. It was a bought that thing brand new and I vowed I'll never buy a new used car again. I just paid it off and it's sitting in the garage now because I want to use that only for uh, family trips, family outings, things like that because simply don't want to put the mileage on. So I picked this little thing up from a dear family at our church and. Uh, Oh, for a few hundred dollars, and I use this as my commuter. <laughs> you know what's funny about it is that pulling up into some uh, places with this truck, the, the rocker panels are rusting out. Um, it sits lower in the back, needs shocks. Um, but people start looking at you a little goofy. You know, it's kind of like that experiment where um, people would go into a crowd with a fat suit on, and everyone starts noticing you, you know, that person and the person wearing the fat suit. Uh, starts feeling a little uh, prejudice towards them and things like that as an experiment. Same goes with this. Our society is so absorbed on looks and, and keeping up with things and going for the next big thing that, you know, we kind of forget about contentment. You know, Apostle Paul in, um, in, in, the, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 12 says, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And you know, that's just it. That was my hard lesson uh, over the years that I've really come to grips with over the last few years as I was paying down my truck that, you know what, after this, I'm going to learn to be content. And so if you're in Wapaka, central Wisconsin, and it's been cold here, we've had yesterday morning was negative 18 degrees. And you see a little busted up Chevy S10 driving around, roaming around with a guy with a big forehead driving. <laughs> Honk, wave, say hi. And uh, hey, don't don't poke so much fun at the S10. This thing is, I've actually called this uh, truck, I've named it Contentment. And uh, <laughs> so it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good place to live. What are you doing to stay content? What are you doing to live a content life? Shoot me your thoughts, PastorBobAdams at gmail.com. Love to hear from you and I will talk to you next Wednesday. Bye.